Hello, we're going to be talking about working effectively with LGBTQ plus patients and clients. What does the acronym LGBTQ plus mean? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning or queer, and the plus allows for new terms. Terms are always evolving. The plus allows us to be inclusive without constantly changing the term. First, let's talk about gender. In the United States, we are all assigned a sex at birth and it's usually male or female. It's usually called sex on forms and applications, but can also be known as gender. Historically, we've expected females to have female names and use female pronouns and follow female norms. And the same can be said of men. However, times have changed. Assigned gender. Not everyone feels that they are the gender they were assigned at birth. Some people feel that they are male but were assigned female. Other people don't identify as either male or female, so the gender assigned at birth won't feel right for them either. This leads us to gender identity. Gender identity is how a person sees themselves. It may be the same as or different from the sex that person was assigned at birth. Cisgender describes someone whose gender identity matches the sex they were assigned at birth. For example, a person who was assigned female at birth feels they are female. Transgender describes someone whose gender identity does not match the sex they were assigned at birth. For example, someone who was assigned female at birth does not feel that they are female. This is different from assigned gender. This is how a person feels or who they know themselves to be. So there are many, many terms for gender identities. These are just some of the terms that are out there. Agender, bigender, cisgender, two-spirit, intersex, non-binary, gender fluid, gender expansive. You do not need to know them all. Just be aware that there are a number of them and it is getting more and more diverse. So let's talk a little bit more about being transgender. Transgender is the overall term for people whose internal sense of identity does not match the sex they were assigned at birth. However, people use a lot of different terms to describe how they identify and transgender is just one of them. Let's talk a little more about some common definitions. Binary means choosing between one of two things. For example, you are either male or female gay or straight. Binary only allows for one choice. Non-binary means someone does not identify solely as male or female, gay or straight. We now often refer to gender and sexuality as being on a continuum or evolving and changing over time. Where male and female are on the ends of the spectrum, there are many different types of gender in between. Some people may say that on some days they may feel more masculine, but other days more feminine or somewhere in between. It's the same thing for sexuality. Gay and straight are on the ends of the spectrum, and there are lots of other ways to express sexuality along the continuum between. Gender expansive or gender nonconforming refers to a person who does not follow traditional expectations about how they should look or act based on the sex they were assigned at birth. This is often associated with gender expression. Sexual orientation is different from gender identity. Sexual orientation is who people are attracted to. Gender expression is how I present myself to my surrounding community. It may be how I walk, dress, speak, and it may be different depending on the setting I'm in. It also includes the name and the pronouns I choose to use. So to sum it up, we have this illustration of a human being. It shows gender identity or who you feel you are, sexual orientation, who you are attracted to, and biological sex or the sex assigned at birth. This all comes together into a package of gender expression or how you show others who you are. Names. We all know people who don't use their given name. Some may use a nickname or a shortened version of their name. 
Some may use a middle name. Others find a name that they like and they use that. A name change can be done formally or informally. Have you ever been called a name you did not want to be called? Maybe ma'am, honey, sweetie, a version of your given name? How did that make you feel? What if you asked a person not to call you a name and they still continue to do it? If someone called you a name you didn't like, did you want to interact with them? If it was someone in your personal life, would you want to continue to spend time with them? We want to be very careful of how we're addressing people and it's always best practice to ask someone for their preferred name and to use that. Let's talk a little bit about language. When we're dealing with names, there are different types. We have legal, preferred, and dead to name a few. When we're working with people, we never want to ask them what their real name is. We want to use terms like legal name and preferred name. Legal name will often be on someone's documentation, but preferred name would be the name that someone would like you to call them. Dead name refers to what a person does not want to be called. It may be a name that they had in the past that they no longer use. We never want to address someone by their dead name. We also do not want to refer to someone's name as a dead name. That is up to the individual to tell you themselves if they choose to. That also brings us to pronouns. We have our traditional pronouns of he or she, but there are many more, they, they, z, and more. You really want to just ask someone what their preferred name is and what pronouns they prefer to use. So let's talk a little bit about don't and do. We don't want to use any terms that are gendered or could be offensive, including hun, sweetie, sir, or ma'am. Best practice is to use a person's preferred name, they, them, pronouns, or referring to someone as you. We want to remember that tone makes all the difference in this. In order to understand the work we're doing with our patients and clients, we do need to realize that reality can be ugly. If LGB persons experienced prejudice-related major life events, they were three times more likely to suffer a serious physical health problem in the next year. These major life events can include things like being fired from a job, being denied housing, being kicked out of a church, disowned or rejected by family, being bullied or physically attacked, and more. Discrimination and increasing hostility under the current administration may cause government mistrust and fear amongst LGBTQ parents, patients, and clients. If someone in the LGBTQ plus community lives in communities with high levels of anti-gay prejudice, they're known to die 12 years earlier than their peers in other communities. So what does this mean? Being LGBTQ can be stressful and dangerous. Many LGBTQ plus people have difficulty trusting others due to their experiences. People in this community learn to always be on alert for non-acceptance and are hyper alert to safety issues. So how does this relate to you as someone providing care to the LGBTQ plus community? What we say and how we say it matters incredibly. The community is small, and word of a bad experience will travel far and wide quickly. Building trust in the LGBTQ plus community begins with you. This is all about treating people with respect and common courtesy. What is respect? It is showing someone that they are worthy of your attention and your concern. It's showing someone that you consider them to be important and have value. So what happens if we make a mistake? We all make mistakes occasionally. Three steps to fix a mistake. You need to acknowledge it. I called you by the wrong name. Genuinely apologize. I'm so sorry. And move on. Don't do it again. Please remember, the work you're doing really matters. Your kindness, compassion, and knowledge can make a difference in someone's life.